Where does ESF fit into that broader strategic agenda that the Council's pursuing? Well, yes, I mean, we're, we are very keen, and I think we are doing this in practice, to work with partners. Our workplace um, programme, as I've already mentioned, has people from the private sector, like John Lewis, as, um, coming into the new Westfield development at Stratford, but also DWP, the Department for Work and Pensions, and also the third sector providers like Groundworth. I mean, we need to um, community links with another third sector um, um, employer in the borough. We need to ensure that that partnership working is actually accountable to our local strategic partnership. Obviously, the council has a well-being power, and. Um, we hopefully use that to bring partners together under the right auspices. There is a, an employment, um, employ, employment and skills enterprise board and because of our skills level, so many of our population are below level one skills, there is a real need for that partnership board to actually make certain not only do they receive statistics from people up the, from the Department of Work and Pensions, but they work alongside the real effects of programme like our workforce. We are looking, obviously, um, um, at the next meeting on the effect of the Olympics, and I think we'll be coming on to that later on, but how there is not just cyclical employment cycles, but there's also a structural change coming in with even the, the local economy in Newham. We've, we've got more retail and hospitality functions because of the not just the Olympics, but because we've got a regeneration programme. Yeah. We claim to be having the biggest uh, um, building site in the EU. Um, obviously, construction is not at a happy um, phase at the moment, but the Council can't necessarily do much about international or even national um, finances. And of course, we've been adversely affected by cuts, along with a lot of other local government services. So there's a real crucial test on us to actually work with partners because so often people fall through the net at an individual level, whether it's the young people um, 18 to 25, with a, which is an increasing issue, or people who have fallen out because of, so shall we say, cuts in local government services. They may have been working for neighbouring council, and people need to sometimes reskill or to um, improve their skills base. So we need to work. And I think the third sector is a very useful contribution, things like the European Social Fund, because you can actually then, under a different funding regime, set the individual um, tar uh, targets across from those bodies to deliver in partnership with the council so that we are making certain that our IAG process could be signposted to them or vice versa. It's, it's a synergy, I suppose, is the right word for it. Um, cooperation model definitely a cooperation model. One of the aspects of ESF is that it has targets that are related to equalities issues for participation of, of women of ethnic minorities, people with disabilities and so on. What would your message be to the providers in terms of how to really try and meet those targets? It is very hard. I mean, I've had experience and because all, uh, all councillors obviously are, um, you know, have their own work experience. My own background would be as a policy officer with, with the experience of writing bids for ESF, is that they are very demanding targets. But if I just take one from, you know, um, an area of my uh, knowledge and ex uh, experience, if we are looking at the transition, for instance, for, you, for young people with special educational needs, they be, they're labelled very often in school as SEN students, they become learning difficulties and disabilities students post-16. The transition agreement is, is a uh, agreement from local authorities and um, the career services and hopefully employment services. That, that You can talk about how many people you get through into employment. What is actually more important, I think, in terms of those people who were previously statemented going through is to work with the employers, some of whom are very, very good, like, for instance, the uh, commercial retail sector is, uh, to actually ensure that the people attract, that there is sustainability within there. And it's to be not, people do struggle with numbers very often. So, shall we say the target is 50 for a particular period of a quarter or whatever. If they feel they've reached 48, they think it's a terrific you know, um, failure or something. I would say that the 48, it needs to be examined. What would they have been doing if it wasn't for, the, for your programme? Yeah. 
and it's, it is hard. I think we should be hard on ourselves, whether it's in local government or in um, you know, the people who are bidding for ESF. But I think it's important that we examine, and it is, it is harder to do, to go away from the numbers, but to do some either focus group work or to look at how sustainable, sometimes relatively small pots of money do have quite far-reaching consequences. But because we all come in different shapes and sizes by definition, we can't always reduce it to the figure work. Yeah? And I think that on disability alone, I think um, we as a society need to look at what works and then disseminate good practice across. And I think we could learn sometimes from uh, things that I might be more critical of in other contexts, but the supermarket sector, um, in terms of what worked for them, how they've worked with um, often third sector providers in, in order to signpost people that there was a job available. Like the work that you know other um, retailers are done with um, elderly workforce. It's sometimes because it's sometimes you take the risk, then people will realise that actually that risk was worth taking, and then they want more people to take the risk. So it's a it's a positive feedback stuff. So you talked about trying to identify and, and spread what mm. works. What are the what are the ingredients? What are the things that work? What do you need to have in place? Do you think for something to really be effective? that the point of contact with the individual who is the customer, the client, has to be not obviously um, not just friendly and approachable, but also receptive to the individual needs. I think so often we've seen people as being a problem um, and or they've come with a series of problems. And it is more time consuming Our knowledge of um, people in terms of the information advice and guidance work is that we're working through a model which says if we can latch on to something positive in terms of what you're able to do um, it's all those confidence building things so I would say a key ingredient is definitely the quality of the interaction from the start two that you do not ever over promise and this is my experience within as a you know, somebody in education and training. Um, it's, it should be high aspirations, but it has to be tempered with a sense of realism and a very good sense of personal responsibility. Um, so often in the past, my students thought they could be barristers by just, you know, uh, doing an A-level. Um, I think there's quite a lot of work in between having the A-level and getting to being a barrister. And it's that constant messaging that you, you need to reinforce but it's it's not with a patronizing view it is about the supporting of the individual in organizational terms the people who are frontline staff need to be well managed and they need to have very clear workload targets and the value for money i'm quite clear value for money and quality assurances should be based on contact time and how much then those staff are supervised in order to be accountable to their um, immediate line managers and so, so on through the organisation. And then the last one is that if it is somebody who's in receipt of ESF or you know, reporting back obviously to the people that they've bid to, that the quality assurance needs to have full monitoring and evaluation because in the past we've had short term projects that have been very good and then we've left people hanging a bit because they're no longer there. That, I think, is the worst of all possible worlds. But I'm also an optimist. I'm a politician. I think that we can constantly strive to say, monitoring, you know, be back to what works and carry on doing it. That monitoring should not be an easy exercise either. Evaluations need to be done by, hopefully, outside parties, people who are not involved in the delivery of the scheme. And then that evaluation is the thing that should be disseminated. It shouldn't be... Sometimes we've transferred things too, easy, too, too early. Now, all of that can be quite labour-intensive and therefore resource-intensive. I don't think it necessarily has to be, so I don't think there's off-the-shelf solutions. I'm not saying that. But I think we can adopt more models from other people even there. I don't think we have to, you know, spend time you know, doing the analysis. I think sometimes there's some really available packages. And now we've got modern technology, we can actually interview our clients 
online, online surveys, we can have focus groups, all of which, and, and our surveys, just like we have a survey in Newham. We claim, I think, that we survey our population more than any other borough. That means, I hope, that our services reflect those concerns. But it doesn't mean that we are just complacent about the results. It does mean that we've got very clear targets set by the people who are ultimately the ones who elect us.